Well, welcome back now, parents of the abducted student of the Federal College of Forestry uh, Mechanization, uh, Mando in Igabi local government area in Kaduna State have issued a 48-hour ultimatum to the state and federal governments to rescue their children. Discussing the issues with me are uh, security expert Denny Samakri and Okichuku Ongwangoma. But first off, let's get highlights of uh, the protest uh, from yesterday. They should help us because all of us we are widows. We don't have anybody. We don't have money to, to release our children. They should help us because we didn't hear anything from them since they kidnapped our children. We've been seeing in social media and so other medias that the governor said he is not going to negotiate with bandits. The same governor, some years back, he made a statement that if the life of his state is at stake, he will negotiate and pay bandits so that they, stop, they should stop killing his people today. Uh, welcome back. Uh, those are uh, uh, grieved um, parents, um, agonizing, worried about um, 39 of the children who are still in the den of the kidnappers. All right, uh, let's just go straight to the discussion. And um, thank you so much once again, uh, Analyst. Uh, let's start with you, uh, Dennis, right now. Uh, some have said that the reason why there are continued um, abductions and uh, security challenges in Kaduna State may just be the stance of the government, uh, not that's the uh, Elrefi's government now, not wanting to negotiate with bandits or terrorists. In your opinion, would you say is a bit of um, some show of um, strength uh, from the bandits and kidnappers that um, they are still in charge? Of course. Um, you can, everybody can tell that um, when the government, especially the Kaduna state government, came up with the resolve that they are not going to pay bandits anymore, I think that is where we run into the hitch. Uh, for the other states that were paying, you remember, within 48 hours, they've negotiated, they've released them, uh, but this time, I think uh, the governor is saying, no, no more payments, because it does not make any sense. You pay them, they go and get more money, they go to another area and then uh, talk to him. So I think it's, it's, a, it's a test of strength of what's going on right now. Okay, then again, uh, let's look at um, Kaduna State in question. There have been several attacks on schools, uh, generally. First of all, we uh, hear of uh, what happened at the government, um, um, the airport officers are a mess, and now we hear of uh, what happened recently with this um, stu student, uh, most, mostly boys and girls. Right now, we don't even know the condition uh, in which they are right now, but in your opinion, these bandits, these terrorists, as it were, have taken to attacking soft targets like oh. schools. How do we begin to ensure that our children are supposed to be in school studying and uh, safe and not even being worried about if they're going to be kidnapped or not? Uh, of course, uh, the decision My name is ben to not be terrorists any longer is a good one. But uh, it should not just be we are not paying them and then we sit down and wait. Um, the government should empower the security forces to go after these guys. Uh, no matter where they are hiding out, uh, the money that you should have paid for that ransom should be used in pursuing them to their hideouts and smoke them out. At the same time, the schools, that the ones that are still open, should be fortified. They should go ahead and put all the physical security uh, measures in place, uh, train them on how to react, put alarm systems, and then, of course, stand up to them. Because, like I've said before, if we close down our schools and children are not going back to schools, then Boko Haram is willing. Uh, Boko Haram says uh, Western education is bad and we're closing down schools. That means they are willing. We cannot allow them to win. Okay, Chuku, thanks for staying with us. Uh, let's talk about um, the the stand of the government and uh, the, the parents, uh, some of them yesterday are saying that 
the state government, that's the Kaduna state government, has not really showed much uh, seriousness in tackling security or bringing back these 39 children who were abducted uh, 12 uh, days ago. In your opinion, would you say that uh, the state government is showing the body language that it can actually handle the issue of security head on in the state? Well, thank you for having me. Um, uh, you can see how this talks, how this talks, those parents are. You can see the pains and the agony that those parents are going through. I can also imagine the trauma that those children are going through in the hands of these bandits. And I could, and I could hear the parents say that um, government is not even reaching out to them. They don't know what steps government is taking. So guys, it seems that there is no interface between the government and the parents. But at least the parents, it will help to assuage their pains and, and you know, sustain their hope. If government could, you know, um, I mean, be in touch with them, say something to them rather than just keep them in the dark. That mm -hmm. that was the the agony that they are going through. And and for me, just like. Um, my colleague said, I agree absolutely with him that um, yes, it is it is correct to say we will not we will not pay these bandits. We are not going to continue to encourage them. And I, this is so because it is not as if government does not know who these bandits are. Before now, we used to think government didn't know who they are. After all, we saw Gumi going to negotiate, going into the forest to negotiate with bandits. So that means that some people know where government knows where these people are. So, and just like he said, what is required is to equip, you know, to enhance intelligence and operational capabilities of security, so that it's not just reacting, but also to be able to detect and prevent these things from happening, and then to also go after them and smoke them out when they do. But we don't see government willing to effectively equip you know, the security agencies, in addition to the corruption that we also see within the security agencies. You know, so all these are combining to make the efforts to, to deal with the security all more right. difficult. Okay, Chuku, would you say is a thing of um, the state government not willing to equip this uh, security apparatus within their purview or their domain or the issue that they don't really have um, the constitutional powers to do some of these things that people expect of them. I, have, I just had some guests who talked about um, devolution of power and then um, the issue of security also came you know, to the fore. They have been so much talk uh, as regards uh, state policing right now. If the state government are given the policing or, of their state to handle, would this bring about the needed change that residents are likely to see? Yeah, when, when I talk about government here in this context, I'm, I'm referring to the federal government because the federal government has the sole responsibility you know, um, over security. Security is, is the sole prerogative of the federal government as it is. Although, as you know, state governments um, um, provides a lot of support in terms of security, but ultimately the responsibility lies with the federal government, which has the responsibility to fund. But it has also become clear that the federal government alone cannot adequately fund security, and that is why, in many cases, state governments contribute both funds and equipment. But both should work together to work out solution to this problem. After all, the purpose of government, the primary purpose of government, whether it be federal, state, or local, is welfare and security. And when any government fails to deliver on these primary mandates, then they have no business being in government. And of course, we're talking about uh, you know devolution of, of, of power. I, I have always been of the opinion that if we are running a federal government, if, if we say we are we are running federalism, then we must run it the way federalism is run in other places, particularly the places that we borrow this practice you know, from. We cannot say that the states can make laws, but that they cannot have their own security to enforce their laws. 
So since it has become obvious that the federal government alone cannot handle cell security, why don't why don't why don't they why don't they see it? You know, powers. Why can't we make amendments in our laws to allow to allow the states to be able to set up their own security and to be able to deal with their All own right, thank you, okay. local issues? Oh, gentlemen, I must say a very big thank you to you for joining us. But I'm afraid that's as much as we have time for uh, to look at this issue of security. Once again, we have been looking at security situation in Nigeria vis-a-vis -vis the kidnapping in Kaduna State. And I was joined by two security experts, Dennis Amakri and, of course, Okichuku Nwangoma. We'll take a short break, and when we return, I'll be giving you my take. All right, here's my take. The spate of attacks on schools in the Northwest signals a double assault on education in the region. The bandits, motivated by money, might be ideologically different from groups like Boko Haram in the Northeast, which are against secular education. But together, they are having a devastating effect on education across northern Nigeria. The government should come up with poverty alleviation programs and unemployment opportunities targeting youths who are mostly involved in abductions and kidnappings out of economic frustration, such as unemployment. And that's Plus Politics. I am Justin Akadunyo again. We'll return again tomorrow at 7. Bye for now.